Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today, we're going to talk about billing statements. In previous videos, we learned how to make invoices for our customers. Well, once a month, what if you want to send them a statement? Say, hey, here are all the orders you got to pay for. All right, we're going to talk about that in today's video. Today's question comes from Dexter in Marietta, Georgia, one of my Platinum members. Dexter says, I've been using your invoicing database for a while now, and it's great. Thank you very much. We invoice our customers net 30, so I need to generate a monthly billing statement showing what they owe. Can you show us how to do that? Well, Dexter, sure. This involves a lot of different pieces, and I'm going to go over them in this video. I do cover all this in my full course, but today I'm going to give you a digested version, a simpler version that's easier to put together. Because sending billing statements can be pretty complicated, but at its core, it's not that hard. So let's first see some prerequisites. Now, today is going to be an expert level class. What does that mean? Well, it's it's beyond the basics. It's, it's not really for beginners, but it's not developer level either. We don't need any programming or VBA code to do this. But there is some stuff you got to know. Now, first, if you haven't watched my invoicing video, go watch this because this is the basis of it. Right? You got to be able to make an invoice. So go watch this if you haven't watched it yet. This is the database we'll be using today. You will definitely need to know grouping levels and reports, right? Because we're going to take a whole bunch of invoices for a specific customer, group them together, and make a report for that customer. And then we can make it for all customers. But you got to know how to use grouping levels. So go watch this. You should know how to make an aggregate query. Very important. That's where you can, for example, take all of the detail items on an order and aggregate them together to get an order total. All right, so go watch this. And go watch my video on making form footer totals. Now, in the invoicing video, I show you how to make a total down at the bottom, right, in a continuous form to get a total for all of these items. It works the same in reports when we put a total in a group footer. All right, so group footer or a report footer works the same as a form footer. So go watch this if you've never done that before. These are all free videos. They're on my YouTube channel. They're on my website. Go watch any of these. You don't seem like you know what that stuff covers, and then come on back. All right, so here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can grab off my website if you want to. And in here, if you watch the invoicing video, you know we've got customers and each customer can have orders. So let's start out by making sure I've got some orders here for my statement. Now I got one order. Let's update the dates in here. This is a little old. Let's make this one for May 1st. Today is May 3rd, Friday. Happy Friday, folks. May 3rd of 2024. So we'll put that in there today. We'll say this one's paid and we'll use that so we can make sure it doesn't show up on our statement, right? Okay, let's do another one here. All right, let's update this one. Let's say this one's from May 2nd. And by the way, if you don't know, I'm hitting Control semicolon to put today's date in there. That's a trick from Excel. You can also do Control shift semicolon to put the time in there as well, but I just want the date. All right, so that's from, let's make this one from yesterday. And this one will be unpaid and it's about 360. Okay, let's put one more order in here for me. Let's put today's date in there and we'll put in here stuff and we'll put in some stuff for 150 and then more stuff for I don't know, 300 times two. All right, so we got a couple orders in the system that are unpaid. I got three orders and two of them are not paid. So those are the two that should show up on my statement. All right, now we're going to have to put together a couple of queries to get our data to the point where we can use it in the statement. Now, the first thing we need is our order detail queue. You should remember this from the invoicing uh, video and what this does basically is it gives us this extended price over here, which is basically quantity times unit price, right? Take a peek at it as a refresher. It's basically my order detail. T. I'm saying basically too much, aren't I? I just caught that. <laughs> I'm basically saying basically too often. Um, here's all of our details from each line item, and then we're just multiplying them together to basically <laughs> get the extended price, right? Okay, so this is good. We can keep this. We can use this one now. Next, I want to get a list of all of the unpaid orders and then bring in those details so I can get those extended prices. Okay, because I want a list of all of the unpaid orders and what the total of each order is. So let's create. Let me open this up permanently here. Double click on it. Create query design. I'm going to bring in my order table, this guy, order T. And I want the line item total, so I need that query that we just made, that order detail you right there and that join should come between them right order ID over here to order ID over there we can close the table window now now what I want is all the stuff from the order table and I'm going to show you something's going to happen in a minute here but just bear with me um, all the stuff in the order table and I want the extended price from over here 
Okay, and if I run this, you're going to see here's each line item and their extended prices. And you can see here's order one, right? Here's order two, order three, and so on. Well, the order three is these two. Okay. Now, what I want to do is I want to aggregate this so that extended price sums up and becomes an order total. Okay, so let's make it an aggregate query. And eh, that's what I was going to say earlier. If you're going to make an aggregate query, you can't have the asterisk in there at all. All right. Okay, not a problem. So we have to just get rid of this and just add in the fields from the order table that you want. I bring this up because it's one of those questions that students ask me constantly. <laughs> What's this problem? I, got this, I can't use an asterisk. Yeah, if you're, using an, if you're making an aggregate query, you can't use the asterisk. So what do we want? What fields do we need for our statement? Well, order ID, of course, the customer ID, because later on we're going to have to bring in the customer's information, right? The name and address and stuff. We need the order date, yep. Whether it's paid, yep. The description, yep. And don't bring in notes, because again, with an aggregate query, you can't have long text fields, but we don't need the notes from each invoice on the statement. Just a description is fine. And really, you don't even need that. You just really need the order date and the amount. All right, now I like to put the price at the end. I try, it's a personal style thing, but I like to keep the fields down here in the order that the tables are up here. So all the order stuff's on the left, all the detail stuff's on the right. Okay, now I should be able to aggregate it now. Okay, good, we got my group by going across. These are all gonna be the same for each order because they're coming from the order table. But what do I wanna do with this one? This is the line item total. I wanna add all of these up. Well, not average, sum, I missed it. There we go, we want sum for that one. So it's gonna sum up all of the line item totals for each order. And now when I run it, there you go. There's order one and the total. There's order two and the total and so on. And here you can see customer one's orders right there. If I sort this by customer ID, for example, you can see there's customer one's orders, all three of them for me, right? One's paid, two are unpaid, and those are the totals. Now this is gonna be for billing statements, right? So I don't care about the paid ones. If you wanna have one that's got your statements that shows the paid and unpaid, fine, leave them on here. But I just care about sending them a statement of what they owe, which, which orders, which invoices are not paid. So go back to design view and under is paid, we're gonna make the criteria false. And now when I run it, I see just the ones that are not paid. And there's my two unpaid invoices. There's one right there and there's the other one. Okay, we're getting there, we're getting there slowly. Now this column over here, as all aggregate queries do, uh, it says sum of extended price. I don't like that. So let's use an alias and change that. I'm gonna come right in here. I'm gonna zoom in so you can see it, shift F2. And I'm gonna say order total colon extended price that says sum up all of those extended prices and I want you to call it, instead of sum of extended price, call it order total. That's called an alias. And if I run it now, there we go. We have a nice field called order total. Don't worry about formatting it at this stage. This is just a query. We're gonna format it as a currency when we get to the report. And yes, my dog just barked. I'm doing it just to see if you guys are awake. No, <laughs> I'm kidding. Someone made a noise in the backyard and the dog. Ah, they, they normally don't bark in the background of my videos. It's normally a safe space, but <laughs> once in a while. All right, so our query is good. We've got a list of all the unpaid orders in our system, right? Customer one has two of them. Customer 10's got one. Customer 19's got one. All right, let's save this query now. I'm gonna save this as, since this deals with orders, I have to keep all the things that deal with orders together, right? So order unpaid queue. And again, another one of my personal things for naming is I try to keep everything singular if I can. Uh, not always, but I try to. Like notes will always be notes, I, just because I've been doing it that way since I can remember, right? So it's order unpaid queue. Okay, now we gotta add the customer information to this data so that we can bring it into our statement, right? We're gonna need the customer's name, address, email, whatever information you want about the customer on their statement. At this point, you can try to add it here, but I wouldn't recommend it since this is an aggregate query. We've got the exact data we want there. One of the mistakes that I see beginners make a lot is they try to do too much in one query. It's, a, it's a, the, probably the number one biggest problem that I see with beginners. Right, you've got what you need here. This is fine, save it. Now we're gonna take the data, the output from that query and add more information to it, okay? So let's create another query to bring in the customer details that we want to each order. Okay, so create, query design, bring in the query we just made, right? The order unpaid queue, there it is. Okay, this time we can bring in the star because we're not gonna aggregate this. And now add into this the customer T. Okay, that will link in all of the customer information with each one of these orders. So just bring in the fields that you want from this table that you expect to have on the statement. And again, another thing that I recommend you don't do is don't bring in the stars from multiple tables. You can, but I just don't like doing it. It's just get things get sloppy. 
So what do we need? Well, we don't need the customer ID because it's already over here. So maybe bring in first name and last name. If you want their email, fine. Address, you know, city, state, zip, all that stuff if you're going to mail it. I'm just going to bring in just address for now just to keep things simple for class. Okay? So there's the customer information that we need for our statement. Okay? All right. Let's save this one. Same kind of naming convention. Order, unpaid. We're going to add the customer details. So customer Q. That's how I name things. Okay? And if we take a look at it now, what do we got? Here's our order information over here right, with the order total, and now each customer's information is right next to it over here. Okay, see that? So now we can put this stuff on the top of the statement. All right, so our query is good. This is basically all the information we need right here to start putting together our statement report, and we're going to do that in Monday's video. Coming up in part two, we're going to start building our statement report by taking all that query data that we just put together and start formatting it in a nice, pretty report that we can have, like, that we can actually send to the customer, and that's going to look nice. So tune in tomorrow, well, no, not tomorrow, hold on, tune in Monday, tune in Monday for part two, or if you're a member, you can watch it right now, because I'm going to record it as soon as I'm done here. Same bat time, same bat channel. And that is going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you Monday for part two. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn Access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the Tech Help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube.
Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks. If you do decide to join as a paid member, there are different levels. Silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now, answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.